This recipe is for a jammy concentrated tomato sauce, maybe the tomatoiest tomato sauce. But the thing about it is you pretty much just dump everything into the pot at once and let it do its thing. So the author of this recipe is Phyllis Grant, who you may know as the blogger behind Dash and Bella, and the incredible memoir that's about to come out, Everything is Under Control. So this recipe is really one that you can just stick in a pot and then go putter and do your thing in the house and let it simmer away for a while. But the one thing that you might wanna do first or kind of as you're getting started is make the balsamic reduction if you don't happen to have balsamic reduction already around. But it's really quick and easy, especially if you're only making a little bit. This recipe calls for two tablespoons, so you wanna start with a little more than double because that's how much it's going to reduce to get nice and syrupy and sticky and sweet. So I'm gonna start with about six tablespoons here because inevitably I'm gonna lose a little bit sticking to the pot and all that. That'll just give me a little bit of extra runway. Phyllis says, turn on a fan, open a window. It's going to make your kitchen and possibly your home smell a little vinegary, which is a scent that she really loves, but it can, you know, it can make you cough a little bit. I think she said it made her recipe tester's cat sneeze. So look out for that. While that bubbles down and becomes the reduction, I can start putting everything else in the pot. Also, I have to say, I believe that Phyllis would encourage us to improvise and to guesstimate on our amounts. I'm gonna try to stick with what she has in the recipe, but if you're in your kitchen, you wanna just glug things in instead of measuring, I think she would be all for that. So from here on out, it's really just dumping everything into the pot at once. You're not even chopping anything first. The first thing is a whole bunch of canned tomatoes. So this is a really good thing to make in the middle of winter or really any time year round when you don't have great tomatoes. I love that Phyllis lets you choose your canned tomato adventure. She says you can use diced or you can use crushed. It doesn't really matter. Also in the end, you can puree part of it or all of it. it depends on what kind of texture you want in the final sauce. I actually happen to love this chunky version and leaving it a little bit chunky in the end because those little bits of tomato get so jammy and concentrated and very, very sweet. And I love running into those in the pasta or whatever you're serving it with. But you do you on this one. Now it really doesn't matter what order everything else goes in. This is some light brown sugar or dark brown sugar. Anchovies. If you don't think you like anchovies, don't worry about it. You're not going to taste anything fishy in the sauce. It's just going to taste really rich and give you a ton of umami. If you already know that anchovies do great things for your food and you like to kind of slip them in when you're just looking for a little more oomph, then you already know all the great things that this is gonna do for your tomato sauce. There are five of these in here. Some olive oil. Gives it some richness. More vinegar. This one's sherry vinegar. Just a little bit to make it tangy. I need wine. Half a cup. All of this is gonna make it smell so amazing as it's simmering. Lemon zest. So you're looking for about a teaspoon. I'm gonna call that a teaspoon. Lemon zest brightens the flavor of any tomato sauce. So it's really great here, but anytime you're making tomato sauce, throw a little lemon zest in and it will do kind of surprising things to make it taste more complex. And then with that same zester, microplane, grating garlic. It's another way that this recipe just totally avoids getting out a cutting board and a knife and making you do all that much because you can just grate it right into the pot. So the last few things that get thrown in there are some salt, some black pepper, some red chili flakes, a few sprigs of thyme and your balsamic reduction, which is now perfectly reduced. All that good stuff is in there. It just needs to come up to a simmer and simmer along for about two to three hours. And I set a timer for every 20 minutes to just swing by and check on it, give it a stir to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. But there are so many other things that I could be doing with my time. I could be doing chores around the house, emptying the dishwasher, writing an email to my mom, uh, calling my friends, reading Phyllis's book, watching a show, listening to a podcast. You can do anything in your house while this is going and it's just gonna make the house smell amazing and be dinner in a few hours. We wish Phyllis was here in the studio with us in New York, but she's in California, so we're going to call her in right now. Hi, Phyllis. Hi. 
How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. These recipes in your book seem like they're a collection from your life cooking. They, they seem very like very you, very intrinsic to your cooking style. So this this recipe didn't just like come out of thin air, right? This is something you've been making for a while. No, no. It, it's like a it's been a procrastination tool for me. So um, about ten years ago, I started thinking about writing a book, and then about seven years ago, sort of a previous version of this book, um, a longer memoir. Um, I was working on it, going away for a few days at a time, every three months, and. I would promise myself that I wouldn't cook because if I start cooking, forget about it. Nothing else is going to happen. But, you know, the book's not going to be written. So I needed something that smelled comforting, something I could tend to every, you know, 30, 40 minutes or so. I mean, you need to take a break anyway when you're writing. So this would be the thing that I would, you know, get up and smell and stir and then say, okay, it's okay for another half an hour and I can go back, back to my computer and back to like tearing my hair out trying to pound out the words. And it was all about what was in the pantry or, you know, a little sprig of dry time that I happened to have sitting out or, you know, it's, it's just sort of the odds and ends that went in the pot. And the odds and ends, as you know, with meat and all sorts of things and with tomatoes, the more you cook them, the sweeter they get, um, the jammier they get. So that was the, that was the thought that I would have something at the end of a writing day to enjoy, but I wouldn't have to, to manage it all day long. And it became a, a like a vehicle for topics. I'm all about the topics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, you have this sauce on your pasta or on your pizza, and then everyone can go to town with whatever they want to put on top to customize it. So when you cook, tell me about you cooking it. So you put it all in there and you thought, wait a minute, I don't have to do anything. I think that's... that's yeah, I, um, I had some friends who were about to have a baby. Um, who were coming over for brunch and I was like, well, I need to make this pasta recipe. So is that, that cool? Is that brunchy enough for you? So we had pasta and I made it the night before um, and it was so good the night before, but then I feel like it did like develop even more flavor just sitting in the fridge overnight yeah. too. So it's a good make ahead thing. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, we had it. Everybody loved it. I had all the toppings out. My baby went crazy for it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, wait, how old is your She's 10 months old, so okay, she's, she's just, she's we've given her things like ramen noodles and she's, she'll slurp them up. And so this oh, one, she's, sauce. yeah, yeah tomato, tomato sauce. sauce. Uh, this was her first tomato sauce. So. That's really moving. I love that. <laughs> no one can accuse this recipe of being complicated. No. <laughs> no, it's perfect and it fit perfectly into my life, um, which oh, I really appreciated. the best thing I could possibly hear. It's amazing. Yeah. I wish you were here. <laughs> I wish I were too. Well, soon. I'm coming. I'm coming soon. Okay. To New York. So I'll let you know. Okay, great. We'll have tomato sauce. Okay. Yeah, good. Bye. All right. Bye, fellas. Sauce is done. It is so jammy looking. You saw how it was before. Lots of liquid, very sloshy. The levels have gone way down. It's reduced. It's so much more complex. So this is the moment where you choose how blended you want your sauce. Do you want it to be kind of half chunky, but a little bit pureed? Do you want it to be totally pureed and smooth? I'm gonna go for half chunky. Mm. It's also really cool to watch because the sauce becomes so much lighter after you blend it. I think that's because of uh, the olive oil in there emulsifying back into the sauce, but I don't know for sure. and make sure that you save a mug full of that pasta water. It's really easy to forget this and just drain your pasta. So whenever I see save a mug full, stick a mug right there by the pot of pasta so that you don't forget, hopefully. Use as much of this starchy pasta water as you want for some salt, some thickening power. Throw a little more sauce on. I just made this in the absolute most obvious way you would want to eat it on pasta, but you could use this concentrated base sauce recipe in so many different ways, which is why it's great that it makes a lot and it freezes well and it hangs out in the fridge really well. You could use it 
on a pizza. You could use it in a sandwich. You could use it as a braising liquid base for chicken or vegetables or beans. Anywhere that you would use a tomato sauce or anywhere that you would use a condiment like ketchup or a chutney, this is gonna do great things. So Phyllis's last genius move with this pasta is to serve it with a whole bunch of toppings. Pretty much any toppings that she has around, you can pick what you want, and then it's also really great for the people you're serving it to. It makes them feel like they can pick whatever they want, too. So I'm gonna pick some nuts and some breadcrumbs and some parsley and some salt and maybe some of this Parmesan. <laughs> now I'm gonna eat it. That is so much more tomato-y than your average tomato sauce. It's bringing out all of the sweetness and the umami and the jamminess and the tartness and the brightness that tomatoes have to offer that we don't usually get to taste. Phyllis also says that this whole topping situation is great for kids because it gives them the impression that they are in control, even though they're not really in control. For more Genius Recipes like this every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and pick up a copy of Phyllis's book, Everything is Under Control. Everything is under control, I promise.